Demerc00 here from Retired Time Productions, aka Dave, and I'm going to do a little tutorial about the best video format for YouTube with Magic's Movie Edit Pro 2014 Plus. Now I'd previously done one a couple of years ago with uh, Magic's Movie Edit Pro 16 Plus. So it's been a long time and there's been a few changes so I just want to show you what's changed when you go to export a video and the best format to put it in. So let's get started. The first thing you do is you have a video down here on your timeline and it's already been edited and ready to export. I'm not going to get into that in this video. This is just about exporting. So the first thing you do is go up to the menu at the top, click on File, come down to Export Movie, and then come down this list, pretty much just skip them all and go to Video as MPEG-4. Click that and you'll see a box come up. Now, there's some predefined uh, selections here that you can pick, but the one I want isn't in that list right now. And the reason is the new version, you have to tick this box right here to display all of them. Now when you pull down the drop-down list, you can see all of them. And the one I like to use is the 720p format for HDTV. That's what seems to work best for me for YouTube. I mean, you could export in 1080p, but that's a bulky file, takes a long time to upload and a long time to download for people to watch it. So I just prefer 720p, which is 1280 by 720. So I click that, and it pretty much fills everything in. Uh, one thing that I like to change is the frame rate. You can leave it at 25 if you want, but I find it's preferable to use 29.97 because that's what my camera uses anyway. Now my camera is a 1080p camera but I'm still going to export at a lower resolution for YouTube. Now th this is what I have from the predefined settings and my one change here to the frame rate. This is what I have now. And uh, the only thing that I might want to change is the audio. I tell you what, I'll just go into it advanced and I'll show you what's in the audio. So the audio is set to AAC with a sample rate of 48 hertz or 48,000 hertz. Now you can change that to uh, 44 kilohertz or 44,000 or what is it? 44,100? Yeah. So you can change it to that. And uh, I mean, you could use 48. Uh, thousand but it's just it's up to you I mean I don't see the sense in it because the audio I'm putting out isn't that great anyway and it just takes up more space so I go to the standard 44 kilohertz which is CD quality anyway and it's stereo uh, you can put it on mono if mono is all you got and that'll save you even more space this video codec is correct for MPEG-4 and I just leave that and the rest of these are unticked I don't do anything with them. So, I mean, really, you could you could have left all this the same. Pretty much comes up okay. I just changed this one thing. No big deal. So that's that. So everything's set right now as far as the audio and video. Now you want to just check to make sure your file path is going where you want it to go. Uh, let's see what I got here. So mine is going into my movies folder on my desktop, so that's good. That's where I want it to go. So that's just hunky. If you don't like that, you can hit this folder icon and pick a place for it to go. Uh, next thing I do is uh, I usually have export selected range only checked, and I'll show you why in a little bit and I sometimes check calculate video effects and GPU. That's unnecessary. Uh, it's mainly just if you have some fancy effects and you you want to make the export work a little more smoothly you can check that. So I could really uncheck that. I don't need it. Um, overwrite file without warning. I usually don't have that checked. I want it to warn me in case I'm overwriting my file. And uh, that's pretty much it. Everything's set. So now let's just go ahead and click OK. 
and this box comes up and gives me a warning. Now I've done this on purpose because some people ask this question. It says, uh oh, we got a problem. There's some empty space. So what I do is, I could hit ignore, but what I'm going to do is hit jump to empty selection. Let's find out what it's talking about. So if I click that, see it jumps to the end here, and what we've got is some empty space right here. Now remember in the dialog I had, uh, let me show you that again, go back in here. Remember in the dialog I had export selected range only. So this range marker out here, the end range marker, is beyond the video so there's some empty space right here. So what I do to fix that is just come down here and click this double arrow and that sets the range markers to the beginning and end of the video. Now another place you could have some empty spaces between clips like if this was slid over like that and uh, let me just set this over here and I'll slide this a little bit. Now say you had a, an empty space right there and sometimes it's not so obvious. It might be so narrow you can't see it on the screen but then when you go to export the movie and you try to save it, you'll get that message again. And you hit jump to empty space and it'll put the marker right there and say, hey, you got a blank space here. So you just slide the video over and you see the end range marker pops right into the end. So now everything's good to go. Uh, it's pretty much all you got to do. You can also crossfade it if you want to, like that, just overlap them. But just make sure there's no space there. Okay, now let's go and export for real this time. We'll go into export movie, back to MPEG-4. Check the selections again. Everything looks good. Path is good. All right, export selected range only is still on. All right, let's go ahead and click OK. Now this is new to uh, 2014. It pops this dialog up with a progress bar. The progress bar used to be down here at the bottom. Okay, so now the movie is exported. And uh, just let me close this. Done. We're done with magics. So I'm going to save the project. All right, now it went into my movies folder right here. So I'll open that. And I can scroll down. And since I had a date on it, there's the movie that I just made right there. Now that's the movie that we're going to go ahead and upload to YouTube. So all you have to do now is get on YouTube and up upload it, and that's pretty simple. You should probably already know how to do that, but like if I was to open up uh, my browser, and I'll just go to my YouTube uploads, and this may, your mileage may vary on this, how you get here, but anyway, I'm there, and then I just hit the upload button, and then I select a file to upload, and I know it's on my desktop, under movies, the movies folder, just scroll down to the latest one, which is this one here, select it, open it, and then it starts uploading. And that's all there is to it. <laughs>